Peace. Namaste. Good morning, everybody. Unlock your true potential. Near death experience, ancient wisdom, and modern teachers reveal spiritually transformative secrets. Good morning, KT. Hey, PL. Namaste, everybody, and welcome to NTE Mystic Talk, my latest name for this on Sunday morning. Maybe it'll become Mystic Sunday, maybe. I'm Peter Panagor, MDiv, and today I'm inviting you on a journey of self-discovery and spiritual transformation inspired by ancient mystical traditions and modern spiritual teachers alike, but only attainable by yourself. No one can do this for you except for you and the divine. The only way out is in. This transformation isn't one of belief. And today is Palm Sunday for Western and Eastern Christendom, and Christianity is built on belief. And this transformation isn't about belief. It is the same path that Jesus himself walked. It's one of awakening, realizing and indul and enlightenment. So let's begin by centering in as we always do with three chakras. One, two, three, and three ohms. And feel the vibration inside yourself. Feel the physical vibration inside yourself. Listen to your breath, listen to your voice. And then three belly breaths. Feel and control your breath. And we'll finish with one extra breath to breathe in the suffering and the pain of the world and breathe out peace. All right, so ride your spine up and down with your mind, pausing at the top, pausing at the bottom. If you're new here, pick a prayer word, lock it to your breath and ride that. Here we go. Welcome everyone. Feet flat on the floor, spine straight, three ohms. In the boundless expanse of human consciousness, there exists a mysterious realm that defies the constraints of time and space, and thus it has been forever and ever since space and time began. This is where the ineffable essence, capital I, capital E, the ineffable essence of your genuine, original, 
and higher self is revealed, where the eternal dance between light and darkness unfolds in the balance point inside of you. For centuries, mystics and spiritual seekers from diverse traditions have ventured into this mysterious realm, capital M, capital R, exploring the depths of their inner worlds to uncover the universe's secrets, capital U. They've done this using breath and mind to stop streams of thought to create streams of clarity, beginning with moments of clarity. And these moments of clarity, they collect inside ourselves. In the Gospel of Thomas, we find a quote that serves as a beacon of light for those who have embarked or are about to embark on this sacred inner journey. Jesus said, no one can enter the strong person's house and wreck it without first tying that person's hands. After that, anyone can ransack that person's house. After that, one can ransack that person's house. That's what I meant to say. Jesus spoke of the house of the strong person. And it's a metaphor, as are all mystical sayings, are metaphors. It's a metaphor, the strong person is a metaphor for the egoic mind, for the false self, for the lower self that obstructs our path to spiritual growth. I've, I've said a hundred thousand million times that I am in my own way in my spiritual life. And so the practice of the breath and the focus and the stopping of thought is to remove myself from in my own way. I'm the one in, the own, in my way. We are all in our own way. This strong person that Jesus talks about represents the aspects of our nature that resist change the tether to our attachments, our desires, and our fears. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't know, my grandmother used to say. But that doesn't apply here, except for the devil we know is ourselves, the thing in our own way, the one that clings to the darkness. The other one, maybe the saying could be better, Better the divine than the devil you know. To liberate ourselves from the stronghold of our ego, we have to first tie up its hands. That's what the practice is all about. We're tying its hands. And then, like skilled sailors navigating the treacherous seas, we undertake a spiritual discipline, a practice such as meditation, self-reflection and contemplation to you know, foster this self-awareness inside ourselves and master our thoughts and emotions. Not, I know that this image is to bind them, but this mastery over thoughts and emotions isn't a binding of them. It's a releasing of them. Once the egoic mind is bound moment by moment, breath by breath, one then naturally releases the thoughts and emotions because one becomes non-attached to them. Thank you, Lee, Michael Walton, for the, the 10 pounds. Appreciate that. By doing so, we subdue the false self's resistance. By binding them with our breath and our minds, we reduce the false self-resistance and enable ourselves to ransack its house, which is us, and dismantle its attachments. This is what Jesus is talking about in his metaphor. This process lays the foundation, bit 
by bit by bit for spiritual growth, for self-realization, and ultimately for the freedom of enlightenment. You can find these same similar quotes in Mark 3.27, Matthew 12.29, and Luke 11.21. In fact, this is Mark, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. It has nothing to do with the external world. It has entirely to do with the internal world. Because remember that Jesus only and always, like all mystics throughout the history of the world, all those who have been in the state of union, teach and talk out of their experience through metaphor. Because it's ineffable, unspeakable. And so he comes up with this saying, you tie it up and then you can plunder the house. You know, that was probably in the news in his day. People going into other people's houses, tying them up and ransacking the house. He took that idea and he brought it inside himself in terms of being able to speak about it to the external world. He saw in that a workable metaphor. Now, throughout history, spiritual masters from various mystical traditions all over the world, and we are a global community right here today. I see Polly from Seattle and Deb Casey in Calgary, and I know somebody's in Costa Rica. Now, the same message is echoed across the world in all these different mystical traditions. It's the same message as Jesus gave here in Thomas and in Mark, Matthew, Luke. Lao Tzu taught us to live in harmony with the Tao. The Tao that can be named is not the Tao. The way, to live in harmony with the way, with the Tao, and relinquish our desires and attachments. Buddha revealed enlightenment by recognizing and overcoming the causes of suffering, attachment to self. Rumi, my poetic hero, spoke of transcending the ego to realize our divine nature through love and devotion. And nature, capital N, love, capital L, to realize our divine nature through love and devotion. Shankara, the Adwatic Vedantic sage, Adwaita, Adwaita. I knew I was gonna have trouble with that word too. I even wrote it phonetically. Adwaita, Vedanta sage emphasized the importance of realizing the true nature of the self with a capital S as the identical, as identical to the ultimate reality. The nature of self is identical to the ultimate reality. And I've I've talked about this in my near-death experience where I was a photon superpositioned, phase-locked, with the bazillion photons of the divine being that that constructed the I am itself. My image, Genesis, is the same as the divine. Less, yes. Same, yes. Paradoxical, absolutely. Meister Eckhart, my hero also, the Christian mystic. He urges us or urged us to seek union with the divine by detaching from worldly desires and ego-driven pursuits. Everybody saying the same thing. In our modern era, error, 
Okay, well, that's a Freudian slip. In our modern errors, in the modern era, the timeless wisdom of these ancient teachings continues to resonate in the hearts of spiritual seekers and teachers. Contemporary teachers like Eckhart Tolle, Ram Das, Thich Nhat Hanh, Adyashanti, and Muji guide individuals towards spiritual awakening and self-realization through the same idea, the idea of no attachment to the false self, that we are in our own way. And the way toward awakening and self-realization, and even after awakening, and even after self-realization, and even after enlightenment, the path continues and the dissolving of the false self. The ancient masters and the modern era spiritual teachers, their common message invites all of us to transcend our attachment to our false selves. Cultivate inner peace and foster your own spiritual growth through mindfulness, meditation, living in the present moment, through breath and mind. And we do this putting breath and mind together, using our breath and our mind together. It's not about head knowledge. It is about this heart knowledge. And this heart knowledge is the breath and the mind creating the space where the stream of thoughts ceases, if only for a moment in your meditation, once in a while in that moment, then you touch the divine here and now. We strive to attain enlightenment on our unfathomable journeys, a profound awakening transcending the ego's limitations and ordinary perceptions. And this changes our relationship, not just to ourselves, but to the world around us, because perception extends into the world. And as we see, so we are. And that's true internally, and that's true externally. Enlightenment is the experiential realization that we are not separate from the divine. And this isn't an idea I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the obliteration of the self and the divine kundalini type of experience where one can actually not be present. One's self identity can't be present and the presence of the inseparable divine by definition, by experience, that we're not separate or that each other is an interconnected aspect of the web of all existence. Call it Indra's web if you wish. Call it the universal web of light if you wish, or something else. Because naming it doesn't define it. It is purely and only experiential. It is the understanding that we're not merely, and this understanding is internal. It's internal like to the core of one's being. It's the understanding, the noetic understanding that we're not merely physical beings having a spiritual experience. We're not merely physical beings having a spiritual experience, but we actually truly are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Kierkegaard attributed to. So what are some of the signs of enlightenment? Enlightened individuals historically 
embody compassion, loving kindness, and empathy, understanding innately the interconnectedness of all beings. Because they've been in union, if only a flash of union, it changed them going forward. They're no longer bound by the world. They live non-attached. Even though they live in the world, they don't float above the world. This is Palm Sunday around the world. Next Friday, Christianity celebrates the suffering of Jesus on the cross. He was bound by the world in his physical body, but not in his heart not in his understanding, not in his experience. He lived in the world, but he wasn't actually bound by it. His body is, was ours too. We live here. We're in this place between the two. But Jesus, as I've been using this example, his pressure was on the heaven side. And so his vision of himself and the world gave him non-attachment. This is a profound wisdom. People who've been in this state of being, Lao Tzu, people who understand it, Jesus, Meister Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle, Ram Das, possess profound wisdom and insight into the nature of reality. The journey toward enlightenment is a lifelong quest. It's not just today because this life itself is a temporary package. And it's not just about this lifetime. The quest in this lifetime is lifelong. But the experience of enlightenment is eternal. The light itself is eternal. It's a moment of eternity, a flash of eternity. It's a lifelong quest here for us, a pilgrimage that transcends the boundaries of space and time, timelessness in the now a recognition and an understanding that we're not from here. We come to live here and we leave, going back to where we came from. Millions of NDEers are talking about this kind of stuff. This experience invites us to explore the depths of our inner worlds because there's layers to it. Deeper and deeper and deeper it goes. And we venture into this unknown for many of you. Now, I took a shortcut. I was given a shortcut. But every one of us who's had some kind of mystical experience, and we are many, and many of us here today, You've taken a shortcut too. The unknown is the unknowable being. Now we venture into the unknown with this courage given to us by grace. The experience that we've had, that is a grace that comes from above. But I don't know exactly where it is to go because it is infinite and ultimately unknowable until I become the infinite itself. And in the moments of enlightenment, that's a taste of that infinity. The practice of self non-attachment, the binding of the wrists, the ransacking of the house, are tools to use. Jesus is presenting tools to his disciples, saying, this is what you do. 
And then the path might be steep and it might be arduous. And I'll tell you that mine has been. But the rewards are immeasurable. Immeasurable with a capital I, a deep understanding of our true nature and an unshakable connection. Unshakable connection to the divine. In the stillness of our hearts, we discover the infinite realm of possibilities, probabilities, and actualities. The choices that we make in life create these actualities. The my teleprompter again, son of a gun. A deep understanding of our true nature and an unshakable connection with the divine in the stillness of our hearts. And we discover the infinite realm of possibilities, probabilities, and actualities that we make happen through the choices that we live in our lives. We create these things out of our minds, through our actions. And if one practices the emptying of oneself, the probability, the possibility, then the probability to become connected to the infinite becomes an actuality. That's the practice of breath. It becomes experiential with a it becomes an experience of mystery with a capital M. And this lies at the very core of our being and our place between light and darkness, heaven and earth. As we continue to walk this path throughout our lives, me included, we learn to navigate the labyrinth of our inner worlds with the guidance of these spiritual masters, ancient and modern alike, who teach selflessness, who teach non-attachment, who teach union and oneness of being. Their wisdom illuminates our way. When I was in Div school, they were my only peers I couldn't find what I was looking for anywhere else. The modern teachers were unavailable to me, but the ancient ones, they were available. Imagine my surprise to discover that modern teachers teach the same thing. Their wisdom, it helps us unmask the illusion of the ego and its fleeting desire, slowly as we begin to unveil this radiant essence of our true selves, of our original selves, which has always been present, always present in you, always hidden beneath the veil of our earthly identities, going all the way back to early hominids and earlier. We're called to surrender ourselves. That's what it is. It's a call to surrender yourself to the flow of the universe with a capital U. To embrace the impermanence of life. Not fear tomorrow. To embrace the impermanence of life and to trust in the wisdom of our inner knowing. To use the inner knowing as a retreat when fear arises to go deep inside with breath whenever needed. Why do I practice with my breath and not tools, sound or music or candles or incense? Because I always have my breath with me. And when I need it, I can dive inside with it. As we let go of our attachments and learn to dance with the ever-changing tides of existence, we can awaken to the profound realization that we are, in fact, inseparable 
from the divine and from each other. And imagine, imagine Earth understanding humanity on Earth, understanding the inseparable nature from the divine. There are tens and tens of millions of near-death experiencers who've had a similar experience. We are many, and now is the time. Now, each of us, we're all architects of our own destinies. We create the reality we live in. And I'm not talking about manifesting a glass of water. I'm talking about manifesting heaven here now. The creation of the reality of the presence of the divine now. That's what Jesus was giving to his disciples. It wasn't his words. Now, yeah, sure, there were stories. But what he was giving them was the divine energy itself. That's available to all of us. To channel heaven here now. And become an embodiment of the timeless wisdom that pervades the cosmos. Become an embodiment of this. Now, ultimately, our journey toward enlightenment isn't merely a personal quest for liberation. It's not just about me, me, my, mine. Me, me, my, mine. It's not just a quest for personal, personal liberation, but it is for the interconnectedness that is all of us, that is all there is. It's an inner symphony of love and compassion a testament to the indomitable spirit that resides inside of us. When it comes to you and you see the other as yourself and this interconnectedness, it tears down social walls. It breaks apart hatreds and enemies. It reveals the light inside the other. And as we heed this intuitive call, listen to the intuitive call as you heed this intuitive call of your inmost self, we become harbingers, harbingers of a new dawn, a world where the light of wisdom and warmth of love conquers the shadows of ignorance and fear. And if ever there was a time in the history of humanity where this was even possible on a large scale, on a global scale, it's now. It's now because medical science has been raising the dead all over the world. And NDEers are speaking out. And because they're speaking out and speaking up, Everyone who's had a divine mystical experience can speak up to. And that's just on a verbal level. On this other level, this inner level, this radiant phase lock experience of the divine presence that we share, this Pentecost in Christian language, this shared divine energy that speaks louder than words. And that's where the power to change the world comes from. Not with the intent to change the world. That's a result of this interior work, of these interior connections to the divine itself. In embracing our true selves and gaining insight into the nature of reality itself, we embark for those of you who are just beginning. We have embarked on a sacred journey of self-discovery because the discovery keeps going on, of spiritual growth because it is infinitely unending, infinitely unending. That's redundant. This spiritual growth continues deeper and deeper and deeper. And it fostering a, a deeper spiritual connection with the divine and with our, our fellow beings. I'm going to turn the birds back on here, see if they're out there. Let's see, there's one right there. That's my outside. Those are my friends out there. 
when we deepen this inside ourselves, we see the divine in our fellow beings and we're contributing to a more harmonious, compassionate and enlightened world right where we are. It's not just about us. It's not just about me and my enlightenment, my self-realization and my awakening. As we create a more compassionate and enlightened world inside ourselves, a collective of selfless light workers living for love. We foster a global environment where individuals can thrive, coexist peacefully, and work together to address the challenges of our worldwide human community. We are one planet. We are one humanity. I heard this morning that since, and this is true, that Caucasians are simply Africans who've lost our melanin. We are all from this cradle of the birth of our hominids. We really are only the human race. And by embracing our collective wisdom, revealed in our mystical experiences to us and shown in the creativity and the humility and strength, we can, we can develop innovative solutions to all the pressing issues of our time, from social justice and environmental degradation to poverty and conflict. And why? Because those things all arise out of the egoic attachment to the self, to fear. In the same way that when one practices and begins to understand the cessation of thought and the power of being in the presence itself, how one undermines one, one's own emotional wounds by getting underneath them. This is true for the entire world. All of these things that we're doing, humanity's inhumanity to humanity, all these things we do to each other, they're all rooted in this one place in individuals and then in collectives of individuals. And as we cultivate this more profound sense of our own inner unity, we begin to see beyond the superficial differences that have historically divided us. When I was a kid, I didn't even know Constantinople had another name. Because in my community, it was, it was Constantinople, not Istanbul. Like that song, Istanbul, Constantinople, where, where I was living. People would spit when they said the name of, of Istanbul. And those kind of historical divisions aren't real. I mean, they're real. We really did them. But they're not real in terms of our humanity, in terms of our origin of our divine being. They're all rooted in the selfishness of fear. And we can recognize the inherent value and the inherent beauty in every culture and way of life when we see the light inside itself. When I see the light inside another, when they see the light inside of me, differences dissolve. This newfound understanding, which is ancient, it's new because it's new, always new. It's always renewing. It's a new understanding and it paves the way for a, an inclusive, diverse, and harmonious society where people of all backgrounds can contribute their unique gifts and perspectives toward the greater good and harmony of all humanity through our inner nature. We have tried through politics and economics and finance oppression, exploration, colonization. We've tried all these ways and none of them have really worked. This is the only way. 
It has been so and will be so. To see the light inside the other sets the light free for all of us. And one does that by going inward and seeing the light inside oneself, awakening, self-realization, and yes, enlightenment. So, are you with me? Do you want to undertake this experimental and unfathomable journey together? That's great. If you want to do it alone, that's great too. But together we have more strength because our hearts become open with each other and we give each other steadfast determination and we can embrace this boundless potential. It's a boundless potential, boundless within each of us. And as we traverse this ever evolving landscape of our souls, we are always, everything changes every day for me. I'm not in the same body I was yesterday. Some of my cells died. I've got new cells and my world, it's always changing. This ever evolving landscape of our souls, that's my soul is experiencing this landscape. But what's the thing that doesn't change? That's the aim of my heart. And in there we can find the solace and the presence of the divine residing within us and around us, guiding our steps. Do you want to guide? Do you want to be illuminated on the way? Do you want to see your path? Here it is. It's in the inner self. Next week, when Christendom celebrates Easter, it'll be the third anniversary of whatever I'm calling this, Mystic Sunday, something like that. Let's remember this week the message of renewal and rebirth. Renewal and rebirth that that holiday represents. And let's, let's honor the infinite potential within all of us and commit ourselves to a life of love, to live a life of love, even when it's hard. Compassion and service to others. And that all comes through the interior journey. You bind the hands, you ransack the house. So thanks for joining me today on this journey. I've talked for a long time today. I want to give a blessing to you. May the, the light within you shine brightly, illuminating your path and guiding you toward your spiritual growth and enlightenment. Peace. Namaste to you all. And blessings. Okay, thanks for being here today and for supporting this, this mission to help create this communal space for mystical seekers and experiencers. And you're welcome to contribute if you want to support. Thank you for all who do and all who have and all who will. You can visit peterpanagor.love. Now, next Sunday, I have an announcement. Next Sunday is Easter. I'm not going to be here. It's the third anniversary of this channel and our community. And I'm going to be celebrating by sequestering myself for a week to write the next chapter for my two book movie contract option, as I did last month and will do again next month. And I want to thank you for your continued support and allowing me to pursue my relentless and lifelong mission to expose the light inside each of us and help you see it, feel it, and experience it for yourself. And once you find this inside yourself, that's where you find your guru, where your teacher is. It is the light itself. And next Monday and Wednesday, I will have pre-recorded meditation videos for practice. And on Tuesday's Kriya group, the breath group on Zoom, it's canceled next week. See you in a week after that. And next Sunday on Easter, Dr. Ken 
Gilligan is going to be running Mystic Chai Salon. And thank you, Ken, for doing this in my absence. And there's going to be a link below uh, next week, as there is today, for Mystic Tea Salon. And you're welcome to join us. And um, I'd love to know what you thought about the birds in the background. They shut them off uh, early on. But um, I would love to know whether they're distracting or not. That's why I get the, head the headgear on now so that I can hear what's going on because I realized that it wasn't coming in over my speakers. Uh, the birds agree. Yes, they do. The birds agree. Uh, Anna from South India, Pondicherry, South India. Welcome, Anna. All over the world today. Hey, Andrew. You're welcome, Wanda. Sandra, I love the birds. Very peaceful. Excellent. Excellent. I don't, I'm going to try to run the birds until... Uh, summertime comes when there's going to be a lot more traffic out there because I live in a rural place and there's a lot of summer people. But we'll see how it goes. If you love the birds, I'm going to keep them running. And the other question is, do the cars driving by, are they a distraction? I don't know if you, you can even hear them. I could hear them. Um, but are they a distraction? This can never be spoken by chat GPT. And therein lies the truth and beauty of an eternal heart filled with unconditional love. It's through the hearts of the mystical masters that the word of truth is spread. And sometimes it comes in language, but the real experience of it is this divine shared energy that magnifies itself, that is available to all of us. And yeah, uh, artificial intelligence, It doesn't have this. Brother Ed, hey, Brother Ed out there in Oklahoma. We embrace and express the grace and wisdom of the Spirit within each and all of us. Amen to that. Ariana Astara. Ariana Astana. I think I say your name right, maybe. Thank you for today. And how do you get birds outside? to sound in your house? Oh, excellent question. I built a system. <laughs> I built a system. I don't know anybody else who has this. It's my my invention. Um, I have a microphone that is a, uh, uh, has batteries in it, and it's hardwired to my Focusrite, which is a uh, an interface uh, that plugs into my computer. And then I have um, volume controls and things like that. So basically, it's a microphone outside with um, a system in between so that it sounds inside. Thank you, Ariana, for the super chat. I, I, I built this because my, it's a soundproof studio. And um, it's really quiet in here. And that's enough to drive a person, meaning me, crazy if I'm here by myself every day, all day. So I wanted to bring in my neighbors. My nearest neighbors is our wildlife. And sometimes I hear the ocean. Sometimes I hear the birds. Love that. Huh? I love the birds. Thanks, Susie. You don't notice the cars, PL. Great. That's good to hear. That's good. Uh, that's what I was hoping you'd, someone would say. Um, thanks, Kate, for loving the birds. When I focus on the stillness of my heart, my breath always shortens, almost stops, and I automatically stop thinking. Do you recommend focusing on the spine moving up and down? How and why? Yes, I do recommend that. But, but mostly I want to say, good for you. When you focus on your breath and your breath shortens and almost stops and you stop thinking, that's what I'm talking about. Mine does the same thing. I can force my breath. I, I do lots of different pranayama techniques. But when I get into the place of quietude, then my breath almost stops. Okay, the spine. Why the spine? Because uh, the brow chakra, right? It's not just in the brow, right? It's right to the back top of your spine. And down your spine and up your spine is a technique. It's not the only channel to run, but it is a channel. Um, Yogananda, Pramahansa Yogananda talked about it being the spiritual spine of his body, the spiritual brain, something like that. For me, it's the, the energetic connection, primary energetic connection between my root chakra and all my chakras and my 
brow chakra. And so I ride this up and down and up and down. And as I do this, I, 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 I not always. Okay. So the, what I'm about to say is our techniques that I use while I'm doing this, I'll stop at my heart chakra and I'll feel it from my back and then I'll breathe to the front of my heart and then I'll breathe to my back and I'll move up my spine to my throat chakra and I'll feel it on the back of my spine, feel back here and then I'll breathe through it to the front and then I'll breathe back. And so I run the spine as like a, as like a, a major highway. It's a highway. It's my main highway. And I run the, run that main highway. There's lots of backcountry roads and other state highways systems that run through the through the body as well but that's the main route that's the interstate for me and um i find that it connects very easily to my root and back up to my brow and has gives me access to focusing in with my breath on all of my chakras where i don't use my imagination i have used my imagination but i don't because this is what i'm talking about here and on a deeper level uh, is energy movement energy activation and energy movement so it's the breath is just simply a tool and so is the spine it's a tool to access your subtle body to access your your um, auric body to access your prana your chi to access your life force energy not to be used uh, i don't use it for the manipulation of anything i use it to aim at the divine itself and let its energy be inside of me. And I share it, I, I do share it, um, but all of it's rooted in the spine. And so I've, the, the spinal root that I, I use the spinal root, I've used it for 40 years. Um, and so it's not just a one-time thing or it's, it's, my, it's my primary, when I begin my breath practice, I can begin by going uh, down my interior channel you know, down, feel it in my throat, go through my heart, down to my root, and go back up that interior channel, or I can actually feel the physicality of my spine, and that's that's its physical advantage. You can feel the skin of it, and so that gives you a little more control of your mind over your body. You feel your body. I hope that's helpful. You don't really notice the cars, PL? Great. Um, thanks for the super chat, Susie. you so grateful for me. Thank you, sweetie. Um, appreciate that. Uh, Kristen, cars are minimal, not too many Harleys anymore. Oh, the, Harley, the Harleys will be back. <laughs> They'll be coming. Um, and, and, uh, but I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Chickadee Dee Dee, uh, you can hear the cars faintly. If it's distracting, Sylvester, let me know. Um, Martha, the cars are faint because it's April in the summer. Yeah, the summer people haven't arrived. And when they come, it's going to be noisier. Um, that's for sure. So I probably won't do it then. But the, having the headphones on uh, helps me understand what you guys are hearing, um, as opposed to what I couldn't hear out of my out of my monitors. And so that's given me a little more control. I continue to try to improve this whole thing and um, figure stuff out. It's, it's thank you for your help. Um, I was a night watchman at the Cleveland Zoo for 30 years. I adore animals. You could have a pig snorting in the audio, and I'd love it. <laughs> That's great. Sometimes we have ducks. We had a lot of ducks out here this morning. They must have gone off somewhere, but the ducks were making a lot of noise this morning. Um, ducks fight all the time. I don't know if you know this, but those mallards, they're, they're fighting all the time. It's uh, They're very noisy. They're lovely. I love them, and I'm so glad they're here. They are very, very noisy. I'm going to scroll back up the chat here and see. Oh, yes, our best archaeological findings. The human race began in what is now Africa and, mine, and migrated elsewhere from there. Yes. Um, there, are, there are questions. I mean, uh, there are questions about the Denovosian. Um, you know, did they develop in Africa as well? Don't really know. Um, that's a question. But for sure, we all carry DNA from Africa. We all do, with all of humanity, even even probably, and I don't know this for a fact, but probably even the Aboriginal people in Australia, their culture being the oldest existing culture, 40,000 year old culture. That's an old culture, okay? They're intact, they have an intact 40,000 year old culture. Um, and I, I know that they have some other hominid um, DNA inside them, like I know I've got a little Neanderthal, um, but we all have got this African root. And as far as I know, they do too. But I, I don't know that for 100% fact, but I think so. Thank you, Peter, says Holly. 
um, and all for this loving space. This is a collective loving space. This is really a space for all of us. And I see TikTok. Thank you, Margie. Um, I see TikTok. I got to go. Um, I'll see you in five minutes at Mystic Tea Salon. The link is below. I am remembering to put that in these days. I am working really hard at all these little systems. Um, I will see you at Mystic Tea Salon. Peace and love, my friends. Thanks for being here and sharing time with me. Peace be with you. See you soon.